to call this meeting to order, if we could please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next, we will move to the moment of silence. Thank you. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Trustee Reinders? Present. Trustee Consolino? Present. Trustee Mason? Here. Trustee Fialco? Present. Trustee McNaughton? Trustee Stylin? Present. Mayor Nitsky troiki Present. Next, we'll move on to community recognition. This is a big one. Tonight, we are recognizing Deputy Chief Dave Bricker. Tonight, the Village of Homer Glen would like to recognize Homer Township Fire Protection District Deputy Chief Dave Bricker. Deputy Chief Bricker recently received the 2024 Dick Arthur Lifetime Achievement Award from the Illinois Fire Inspector Inspectors Association. This award is given to the fire prevention professional who dedicates his career to the cause of fire prevention, life safety, and education in a manner that gives great honor to the fire service. This award is named after the first president of the Fire Inspectors Association. Dave has 42 years in fire service, and this honor is befitting deserved. Congratulations, Dave. amendments to the agenda well yes uh, yes mayor I'd like to um, I would like to move P all the way up until after our consent agenda P1 yes P1 thank you is there a second I'll second that all in favor aye aye, aye. aye. opposed hearing none we're moving P1 up is there any more amendments to the agenda all right is there a motion to approve I'll make that motion is there a second I'll second Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Trustee Fialco? Aye. Trustee Stylin? Trustee Mason? Aye. Trustee Reinders? Aye. Trustee Consolino? Aye. Trustee Stylin? Aye. Okay, next is public hearing. Is there a motion to recess the regular meeting 
for purposes of conducting a public hearing. Is there a motion? I'll, I'll make, make that it. motion. I'll Trustee second. Mason, Trustee Reinders. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, is there a motion to open the public hearing on the Village of Homer Glen's fiscal year 2024 to 2025 budget? I'll make that motion. Trustee again. Mason, is there a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the public hearing on the proposed fiscal year 2024 to 2025 budget is open for comments. The public hearing is designed to allow residents to state their opinions and or concerns. It is not a question and answer session. Given that, is there anyone that wishes to comment on the village's proposed budget? Hearing, no, or hearing none, is there anybody out there that didn't sign in that wanted to discuss anything? No? Okay, if no, John, did you wanna speak? No, uh, I just wanted to mention that I provided draft two to the board. Uh, I shaded the, the page numbers in green. Uh, those, those are the pages that changed from the draft one. I gave you a little road map of what we changed and uh, nothing significant. We're still in a general fund operating position. Still have plenty of re uh, resources to, to do capital um, outlay purchases and capital projects. So um, hopefully, uh, there's no more changes and we'll come forward to the board uh, at the next meeting to, for your approval and we'll file it with the clerk uh, so we can meet all our legal obligations. Does any trustees have any comments? Um, I don't, but uh, thank you very much, John, for making that uh, simplified. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, is there a motion to close the public hearing on the Village of Homer Glen's fiscal year 2024-2025 budget? I'll make that motion. Second. Tr Trustee Reiner, Trustee Consolino, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, the meeting is now called back into order. All right, moving on to approval of minutes. Is there a motion to approve February 28th, 2024 Village Board meeting? I'll make that motion. Trustee Mason, is there a second? I will second. Trustee Fialco. Trustee Mason, do you have any discussion? I do not, Madam Mayor. Trustee Fialco? None. Trustee Consolino? No. Trustee Stylin? No. Trustee Reinders? No. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Is there a motion for March 13th, 2024 Village Board meeting? Again, I'll make that motion. Trustee Mason? No, Trustee Fialco, any discussion? No, ma'am. Trustee Consolino? Yes, I have changes for March 13th. And so are you making a motion to amend? Motion to amend or strike. Page. Okay, last page, page 17. Uh, I did not state uh, on the very top, it says this committee is going to be a big deal with lots of happenings. I did not state that. Please. I'm strike. sorry, can you restate what page that was on? Last page, page 17 of 17. Okay. On page 16 of 17, um, I also did not state, and as for an ethics committee, this is something she had requested when she first began. I did state that, but I did not say, but not a committee, rather a commission. What I did state was as directed by our village ordinance. So I would like that change to reflect that, please. Is there a second to amend those m minutes? I'll second it. Trustee Fialco, any more discussion? Madam Clerk, can you please call the roll on the amendments to the meeting? Trustee Reinders? Aye. Trustee Fialco? Aye. Trustee Consolino? Aye. Trustee Stylin? Aye. Trustee Mason? Aye. Okay, is there a motion to approve the minutes as amended? I'll make that motion. Trustee Consolino? And I'll second. Trustee Reiners, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, moving on to March 27th, Village Board meeting. Is there a motion? So moved. Trustee Reiners, is there a second? I'll second. Trustee Mason, any discussion? No, ma'am. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Abstain? I'm also abstaining. I wasn't present. Okay. You got that, Gina? Okay. All right. Motion carries. Moving on to public comment. Remember to keep your minutes to th or comments to three minutes. John Walters. Hi, I'd like to, for, first of all, I'm gonna start with uh, bringing God into this. Um, and fire, son, Holy Spirit. Uh, God, all glory and honor goes to you. Uh, for the times that we've not lived up to your expectation, for the time that we've sinned against you, we ask for your forgiveness and your help to do better in the future. Give us the power to grow closer together as a community. 
Help us to discern your will for us and help us to execute your vision for us. I ask this in your name, amen. Thank you, my, Mr. My public comment oh. is, uh, first we have, you know, we've had many discussions about staying in a rural community, uh, open space, the Hadley Parker Road, 143rd Street, and now we have this town center before us. Now, I've been to enough meetings here to see developers come in and um, present their plans. And they also, every single one of them, I believe that where I've been here, has also stated that without the ability to have rentals, if they cannot sell the units, they are not gonna be able to get financing. So I've been here for enough of those to know that this is probably true with the town center too, which concerns me, which concerns many of the residents here about having rentals in Homer Glen. For one reason, is rentals seem to um, vote for tax increases because they are not responsible for the property taxes and if the rents get too high, they just move on. And us as homeowners are stuck with the higher property taxes. Second of all, if depending on what the, how the rentals go and who it's rented to, we could have uh, a bigger uh, impact on our roads, on our parks, on our infrastructure, uh, on our schools, and that would create higher property taxes too if there was more students in the school. So I, these, this uh, research thing that went out about the town center, every plan I saw there had a lot of units. Now, um, we've had discussions in face to face that, that you would not do this, but I just wanted to make sure that this was on the record and that I am against any kind of high density housing. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Walters. Okay, moving on to reports and communications from President and other officers, Village Manager Joe Baber. Thank you, Mayor. Um, currently, you may have noticed when you walked into the meeting tonight, there's a uh, pinwheels, blue pinwheels out by the flagpole out there. These were installed by the Homer Glenn Junior Women's Club and they're in conjunction with prevention, prevent April being prevent child abuse month. Um, so those are why, is why those are out there. Um, currently the village is conducting a food drive until April 19th. The con collection trailer is out front of Village Hall and this is for the Lockport Food Pantry. The village is also conducting the 2024 Tulip and Butterfly Art in the park. Um, there are limited quantities to be purchased of tulips and butterflies to be decorated. They're sold on a first come first serve basis. The cost is $15. Registration will go on until April 26th. Volleyball nets are up at all the parks. And also, there is going to be a public meeting in May to get the opinions of the residents regarding the 143rd Street improvements. That's all I have at this time. Thank you. Village Trustees, Trustee Consolino. Okay, good evening. Reporting for the Environment Committee. Um, Environment Committee has approved our very first memorial tree application. This program was a long time in the making and it's a very good feeling for us to be able to provide this service to our residents. We are looking forward to promoting the opportunity for residents to honor and memorialize their loved ones by purchasing a tree and a plaque in our village parks. We have different packages available that include a variety of trees and markers ranging anywhere from $300 to $1,800. The trees that we currently offer are American Hornbeam, Red Maple, Linden, Oak, Norway Spruce, Hackberry, and Eastern Redbud. Anyone interested in our memorial tree program can reach out to the village, anyone <clears throat> for further information and an application packet. Um, during the Environment Committee this week, we discussed our upcoming events and dates. Right now, the village is, is accepting applications for our big tree competition. If you have a tree that you would like to enter, please contact the village and we will send out a committee member to come out and properly measure it. Every year we get some really amazing sizes with trees, so please feel free to give us any suggestions for candidates. In 2023, Messenger Woods had the largest specimens of jack pine and black maple trees in the entire state of Illinois. So candidate trees can be literally anywhere around us in Homer Glen. May 1st is the deadline for the big tree applications. 
During the first week of May, we will also be adding a virtual spring, up, spring cleanup onto our schedule this year. We are asking residents to come together in support of Earth Day and take the opportunity and help pick up garbage around Homer Glen. Residents can pick a location and a day that week, and the village will supply garbage bags, gloves, and grabbers. More information for this week-long cleanup will be posted online. We also will be accepting applications for our annual Community in Harmony with Nature Awards. If you have or know of someone with a garden or even a native garden that really stands out to you, please let us know. We welcome all residents and local businesses to apply, and we gladly accept the early suggestions. Our Environment Committee enjoys acknowledging and rewarding community members who are making every effort to beautify our landscape in Homer Glen. This deadline will be in mid-June. I would also like to let everyone know that our committee members and staff have gathered information for the Village website regarding energy efficiency savings and energy tax credits. Please take the time to look at the savings that can add up when you apply for these energy credits. Thank you to our committee member Andy Pinelli for his dedication to getting this information out there for everyone. Please be sure to get your milkweed seeds to help promote our monarch butterflies. They will be available at the upcoming Village Kite Festival. And I'd like to say thank you to the Homer Junior Women's Club for their repeated assistance with this project. Stargazing will be taking place Friday, May 17th at Heritage Park, and we will have a super cool sloth and other amazing animals for residents and refreshments to enjoy inside the Village Community Room. I'd also like to add a disclaimer. Attendees can take pictures of the sloth, but they cannot touch it or take pictures with it. Saturday, May 25th will be our third annual Young Seedlings event. The Environment Committee is fortunate to be assisted by Pran, Fran Prevailer from the Homer Glen Junior Women's Club and Trustee Rose Rinders and our park staff. This is a great hands-on activity for children to enjoy planting numerous seedlings for them to take home and watch them grow. Registration will be available online soon, so please keep an eye out on the Village's website and our social media page for this and all of our summary activities that are coming up. Lastly, with the upcoming seasonal newsletter, we have a list of our recyclables and non-recyclables on the perforated backside of the newsletter brochure. We attempt to provide this information annually to our residents to help encourage daily recycling to protect our environment and to promote our yearly Plastic Free July campaign. So be sure to cut it out and keep it handy. Thank you again to all of our staff for making this happen. Um, I would like to make one request tonight at the end of my report. Could we please put all of the uh, mentioned events and activities on our main schedule? That would be greatly appreciated for environment. Thank you. Trustee Reinders. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, reporting for the Parks Committee, um, today I had the opportunity of uh, evaluating all of our parks. Jennifer Vittoria and myself visited every one of the parks in uh, Homer Glen. Uh, we actually uh, wanted to do some evaluation and see what parks would need uh, any repairs or um, any additional equipment. Um, we did uh, come up with a couple sites that we figured uh, needed a, a little enhancement to say. <clears throat> so I was very happy to do that. I have to give a really shout out to Jen and her team. The parks look great. Um, what a difference a year makes from last year to this year. Uh, some of the grasses in the park are so green and beautiful and uh, I was just very, very impressed. So I really would like to give a shout out to her. And also uh, the tennis courts at Stonebridge, they look beautiful. And we are gonna be doing a grand opening of the tennis courts on uh, May 8th at 10 a.m. So please, if you're in the area, stop by. Uh, we'll be having refreshments and uh, some giveaways. Uh, it's, it's been a long time coming and the residents are very, very pleased with uh, how the area has really turned out. And also, the new slide is in at Stonebridge Park. I'm sorry, Evelyn's Gate, Evelyn's Gate, sorry. <laughs> Got my parks mixed up. Uh, Evelyn's Gate, and uh, it went in uh, yesterday and the day before, so it, it's up and it's uh, usable, and it really, really, they did a great job with it. It's, uh, the, the company was Ann Bernard that actually, Ann Bernard Landscaping that uh, did the slide, so um, and that's my report. Thank you, Trustee Stylin. Uh, no report. Trustee Mason. Um, no report. I just want to say uh, thank you to the uh, Will County Sheriff's. Uh, all the numbers are down uh, across the board, but I'm going to leave that for Lieutenant Taylor's report. Um, <laughs> thank you. And um, the, uh, Jen Victoria has done a great job with all the parks. I did monitor the uh, install of the uh, slide. They did a great job. It looks like it's um, the original, and they uh, really shored it up and uh, cleaned up really well. Thank you. Trustee Fialco? 
Yes, thank you, Mayor. Uh, Homer Fest is 11 weeks away. Uh, it'll be here before we know it. Uh, it's June 20, it's the last four days of June, 27th, 28th, 29th, and 30th. Uh, that 27th, the start of Homer Fest, is fireworks night. Uh, that is a Thursday. Um, and that'll be at dusk, and three bands will also be playing that day. Um, if you get the chance, I'd like uh, anybody in this audience that's willing to, uh, to volunteer uh, two hours of your time on any one of the four days, and that can be done at homerfest.com, or you can call the Village Hall and talk to events, and they'll be glad to sign you up. Um, that is basically it. Thank you. Thank you. Village Clerk? Village Attorney? Uh, no report, ma'am. Public Safety Officials, since Kurt put you on the spot, or Trustee Mason, sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Trustee Mason. Um, I wasn't going to say anything, but I guess I'll say something now. Uh, now that it's getting warmer, we're going to step up traffic enforcement. Uh, I've gotten six or seven traffic complaints from neighborhoods, so we're going to be uh, really hammering with tickets. Uh, so please slow down in subdivisions. Also, it's uh, ATV season, so we're, we have zero tolerance for that. No ATVs on any property that's not yours or any roadway. We're going to be ticketing and towing ATVs. And if you allow an unlicensed driver to drive an ATV on the roadway, we can write you a state ticket too. So we don't want to do that, but it's just too dangerous with all the traffic up here. Also, now that it's warmer, with any storms, um, there's going to be home repair frauds. So any, especially uh, senior citizens, if someone shows up at your house unsolicited, don't answer the door, just call us. Uh, it could be a burglar. Um, so any, any legitimate business is not going to go door to door. And, our, and Trustee Mason is right, our numbers look great. The deputies and sergeants are doing a great job. Thank you, Lieutenant. <clears throat> okay, me. Uh, as Lieutenant Sa Taylor did say, it's getting warmer out. Don't forget if you're going to drive your golf cart around this summer to make sure that you get your permit, uh, contact the village and then the uh, Sheriff's Department will come out and. Uh, inspect your golf cart. Um, Boy Scouts. I want to. We're going to recognize the Boy Scouts at the next meeting. But uh, if you ever wonder where all those flags come from in front of people's homes, there's a front yard flag program by the Boy Scout Troop 229. And I said I'll recognize them at the next meeting. But we left some additional um, applications for a flag to be at your home right by the sign-in sheet. Um, they're also doing a sponsor a veteran one as well. Um, I know that they did get 10 anonymous uh, donations for 10 veterans, so that's a, that's a very nice thing. I see two veterans sitting back there already. Um, so that, that's a good thing for our town. It's really pretty to see when you drive down the street and you see all the flags. Um, I know that a lot of people keep contacting me about 143rd Street. I promise you, as I've always promised you, we're still working on it. We're still fighting it. We're going to talk tonight in executive session more about it and how we're going to proceed. Um, the reason why we're not real forward about it is because we don't want to show our cards or our, you know, show what's going on. We don't want to uh, risk the case, I guess you can say. So just so everybody knows, we are working on it. Um, I know that there was a circulation of a petition going around, uh, something in regards to that the mayor wants apartments. That is far from the truth. I never said we'd like apartments. Nobody wants apartments up here at this board, at this dais. So I just want to reassure everybody, apartments were never mentioned that we want them. Just so if you hear that, that is not true. Um, I think that's it for right now. We're going to move on to consent agenda. Consider for approval the accounts payable for the period of March 29th, 2024 through April 11th, 2024 in the amount of $81,927.69. And two, consider for the approval the purchase of five automated external defibrillators, AEDs, and accessories totaling $10,000. Is there a motion? I'll make that motion. Trustee I'll Mason, second. Trustee Reinders. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Trustee Stylin? Aye. Trustee Reinders? Aye. Trustee Mason? Aye. Trustee Consolino? Abstain. Trustee Fialco? Aye. Motion carries. We're now moving on to P1, the workshop, workshop Town Center Visioning Wrap-Up Presentation by Lakota Group. I'll start off with an introduction sure. and then bring our consultant up. Thank you. So we're here tonight with our consultant, the Lakota Group, to present the results of a year-long visioning process for a future town center. The idea of a town center for Homer Glen has a long history. The 2005 comp plan includes the idea of a town center and identifies a proposed location fronting 151st Street. 
More recently, some of our village trustees listening to residents heard repeatedly about the desire for action toward making a town center come to life. Staff was directed by the board to follow up. A scope of work was created, an RFP was released, and the Lakota group was contracted to undertake the town center visioning process to, to directly respond to this community dream. Visioning is a process by which a community imagines the future it wants. We asked residents what they want their, for their families. Uh, the resulting concepts for a town center reflect a community leaning toward a place where residents can gather to experience a sense of community, enjoy dining, and shop at smaller scale boutique stores. Most residents who engaged in this visioning process see their preferred location as being across from Village Hall and Heritage Park. The connection would make the town center easily accessible by walking for people wanting to dine and socialize after attending events at the Future Park Amphitheater or otherwise enjoying Heritage Park. Our consultants were also asked to analyze the market to determine what would be economically supportable given competition, demographics, and other factors. Considering both the community input and market findings, the goal has been to create concepts that could be supported through private investment and su successful in attracting the types of businesses desired. It is hard to envision a town center from words alone. We now have some visual concepts created out of a, pu a public engagement process. They show how a mix of land uses could lay out, relate to each other, and create a walkable town center. They show how the internal roads and access could work. We also have three-dimensional renderings to illustrate the massing of buildings. So we have a sense of how the town center and surrounding neighborhoods might look and feel. We have some visual to work from. Um, it is a starting point for further consideration if and when the community and the village board choose to move forward. Many more steps would need to occur before the village could be prepared to attract private investment. A key finding in the study of real estate conditions indicates many more rooftops would need to be built to attract and keep the restaurants, eateries, and smaller scale retail shops desired by uh, residents in a town center. Current code does not allow denser housing. Should the board want to move forward, the next steps would involve further discussion within the community, financial studies, and a regulatory pathway to development. A pro forma analysis Turn this one off. Thank you, and sorry about that. I'll just start again. A pro forma analysis would help to understand the financial side of developing a town center. It can be tested with different scenarios, and it would put the village in a better negotiating position when selecting a developer. It would make us equals at the table uh, because we would understand the numbers. A cost-benefit analysis would weigh both sides of the financial picture. There is a potential for a town center to be a net revenue benefit to the village, but we need to study this to understand if this would be the case. One potential benefit from the visioning process are concepts showing how the demand for additional recreational fields could be planned and connected with existing resources at the Civic Complex and Heritage Park. A regulatory pathway would need to be put in place uh, to permit smaller lots for the single-family detached homes surrounding the commercial core, to permit the mixed-use buildings in the commercial core itself with residential above commercial, and to permit the multifamily areas in the surrounding supportive full build-out. It could be accomplished through a town center zoning district or overlay that applies only to the area identified as the town center master plan location. Despite many concerns for density, residents will continue to dream about a town center. People still want a gathering place. People are leaving town to get the experience they want and spend their money in other suburban town centers outside of Homer Glen. This is something to consider when sales tax is the largest piece of the village's revenue pie. While some would, pr would, some would prefer to see growth happen organically as developer proposals come in, a plan based on a community vision gives the village much more leverage over what would actually develop. 
To bring a conceptual town center alive will take much more discussion, and really it's going to take a lot more active grassroots support, really, before anything is going to happen. And it's going to take many years for it to happen as well. So at this moment, the concepts resulting from this visioning process for a town center is a proactive first step. Um, at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Kevin Clark. He's the principal and director of design with the Lakota group, and he's going to provide you with a presentation. Great. Thanks, Janie, and uh, I appreciate the time tonight to go through the process and, and um, of this year-long process. It's, it's been uh, uh, great talking to people, really engaged community, very passionate community, and that's always great to see. Um, so I'm going to go through that process and um, these concepts. Again, they're concepts. We're, we're planners, we're designers, we're not developers. So we start with concepts. It's visioning, right? That's what we were charged with. The process that we started with, um, three-phase process, we call it engage, assess, and vision. Um, the engagement part is ex uh, uh, looking at existing conditions, starting to talk to folks, starting that community engagement. Um, and then we get into the assess, where we're looking at concepts and ideation of strategies. Um, and then we, and we look at the market. We did a market report as part of the packet. Um, we have a 176 page report. I know there's a, there all the public comments in that. Um, so that's, that's included. Um, and then the envision, and that's where we do the concept visioning and we refine those concepts. Um, and, and I would say really we have four concepts it's, it's, it's one framework, really. There are all variations on that theme. Um, all of those components that we think are important to be part of a town center are included in that, and they can be in different, they can be mixed and matched, and we'll, we'll go through that. I'll go through that. Um, we, we started with this question, we asked people this question, what makes a town center? Uh, we thought this was really important, and, and we, oops, sorry. Whoa, I really skipped. Sorry. <laughs> Okay. Um, we start by looking at our traditional Main Street downtowns and, and what are those characteristics of the places that we all love to go to, we all love to be in. And, and the things that comprise those places are housing and commercial. Um, that could be restaurants, that could be entertainment, that could be different types of businesses, boutique shops, services and retail. But there can also be civic uses, and there can also be public spaces and plazas and open space and religious institutions. So we think of those mix of uses, um, not singular uses separated from each other that you need to drive through to, but places that come together in uh, different uses that come together in one place. That creates that environment. Um, but it's also the places that we can have events and that we can bring our community to. Um, and generate activity and foot traffic. Uh, we can program these places in our streets and our plazas and our open spaces, and we can bring people together and have community. I'll stop here because this is what we heard the most of when we asked people the question. We want places to come together, uh, a place where we can come together as a community. And, and that was really interesting to me um, because it wasn't necessarily just about a coffee shop or um, a restaurant. Um, of course, people mention that, but it was about the places where the community comes together and people had that vision that they were talking about and I think um, the words, but not necessarily that vision that we could help show. Um, so as we look at, sorry, there's a little delay here, okay. We look at what's been going on in Homer Glen. We look at the demographics. Um, and not much has changed, and it's not projected um, to change um, with the population over time very much. But people do want to live their various life stages here. The folks that we talk to really want to be here as they age. They want to age in place. They want to be able to stay in the community. Um, and since it has, while the population has re uh, hasn't changed much in recent years, it's changing in other ways. Um, we're aging. Uh, baby boomers make up a large portion of the population, but as we see that, we need to accommodate that. As boomers age, um, we want to be able to provide housing for them, and in a lot of ways, um, that's downsizing, that's finding a place that's less maintenance, less driving, 
certainly we think that has a role in a town center in a place where somebody a senior can walk to services restaurants open spaces to to experience community and millennials another huge portion of the population and they're not kids anymore right they've grown up a little bit they have the slow life strategy as we call it marry later smaller families um, but they're seeking, seeking different things. They're seeking experience in, in housing that they can afford in places um, that, they can, that they can go to and experience. And we think about those as we um, have these, as we, as we envision this. And, and part of the early survey, we asked people here, what are the places, when you're talking about town center, what are those places or downtowns that you really, um, uh, you really like? that you'd like to experience or go to. And these are the ones, you know, Naperville, Downers Grove, Burr Ridge, those are bigger communities, right? Um, Frankfurt, Lamont, Lamont's close. Frankfurt kept coming up. Frankfurt was the one that became really a case study and really a, a driver for how do we really break this down in a way that makes sense for people. Um, so we looked at downtown Frankfurt and started to pull some metrics from that. Um, how big is it? 23 acres, downtown Frankfurt. That's that orange rectangle. 23 acres. Okay, start to get a feel for what, how big that is. That's 137 square feet of ground, ground floor commercial. Um, that gives us another metric. That's a, that's a barometer for when we start to plan. Uh, and as we think about it, there's about 30 housing units in this downtown, but within a quarter mile radius, there's 500 housing units of different types. So that's another thing to think about when we, when we start to put pen to paper. Um, you know, when we, when we engaged people, we got about 500 different folks that were involved, which is, uh, to me, really great. Um, as I said, people were really interested in this. We, went, we had two community workshops here. We had two community surveys online. Um, more than a dozen focus groups and interviews with people. Uh, just having these conversations, asking questions, and then we were at pop-up events, um, Homer Fest last year, Kite, Kite Fest, Stargazing. So these were the places where we can ask people that don't normally come to these events or community workshops, what do you think about this idea? Showing them images, asking them about a town center, they may have not even thought about it before. They may have lived here for a while, but it was an opportunity to get information from people that don't normally engage. Um, we invited people to um, make a collage of their ideal town center, so images, putting together those land uses and the images that they think of um, when they think of town center, the character and the architecture and the open spaces. And we started with location evaluation. We had eight sites uh, the village was considering. We wanted to assess all of those sites to figure out what is the right place for this to occur. Um, and by and large, everybody seemed to be pointing at, and most people seem to be pointing at the property across the street. Um, for a number of reasons, it can, it's big. It can accommodate a phased development. This isn't all gonna happen at once. As Janie said, we know this is a long-term vision, right? Um, so we can accommodate that. It has good exposure on 159th. Um, has um, good visibility from 151st as well, and access. Um, and uh, the steering committee kind of drove us as we, as we thought about it, this was the place we thought, you know, has a great connection to this crown jewel, great connection to your civic center. We can build from that, we can connect to that. Sorry. So I wanna talk about some of the land use categories that we had discussions with people and show imagery um, because as I show concepts, this helps visualize what that means. And so each concept has these components in it. Um, so the idea that we call town center land use, and that um, evokes uh, commercial and restaurant and kind of small, small scale boutiques um, in, in, in smaller buildings usually, something that, you know, we heard a lot about the character we want to understand and build upon your character here. We show those images um, as the core of whatever that concept is, usually um, oriented in a way around open space or green space or great walkable streets. Traditional single family, this is the predominant land use in the village and everybody kind of knows what this is. So thinking about that as a component of this, 
Um, town center single family. What we mean by that is maybe you know, smaller lots um, that are walkable. Maybe there's rear loaded. Maybe there's a garage in the back so you don't have so many cars parked in front. You have continuous sidewalks. Um, it allows for the, the, the um, town center to be surrounded by more residential people on porches, people greeting their neighbors. Um, townhome single families, the idea of bringing townhomes into this, either front-loaded or rear-loaded townhomes. We show different styles. Obviously, there's a lot of different styles. And then retail mixed use, very cognizant of height. We know there's a sensitivity to that. All of the images we show, three stories, um, thinking about that scale and how it all really relates and could relate. And, and as we think about retail mixed use, you know, that's the ground floor retail or commercial, could be restaurants, could be entertainment with residential above it, um, or even commercial above that. Could be a doctor's office, could be a dentist's office. So those things are um, a component of this, of the vision. And then of course, um, civic and open space. Um, to me, you orient your town center in a way where you're bringing people together on those, on those spaces, and we show some imagery. Um, but then recreation, that was a big discussion. You've got Heritage Park here, you've got recreation. Can we build upon that? Can we attract more recreation and, and make that a component of it? That could be soccer fields, ball fields, ice skating. There could even be an indoor recreation component, which we show in a concept. That could be in any concept, if that was to, uh, um, desirable and um, feasible for, to, to uh, um, in, incorporate. Connectivity is super important as we think about, um, you know, when we go through these framework, we're always thinking about walkways and um, the streets and the scale of those things. How are we getting from one use to the next? How, where are people going? Um, the streetscapes and the landscape component of that is really important, as are um, making sure we connect into existing bike paths and trails. You've got some great systems here. We want to extend that, and we want to have that throughout any concept that we have. And obviously, with the location, we want to make sure we connect across 151st and really connect into this. Because this, to me, is important. This is what we're building from. This is a lot of the reason why uh, people thought this was a great location for a town center to build from. Because you've already got community events. You've already got people coming here. You've got your civic hub. And now if we connect into that and really play off of that and build upon that. Uh, as Janie mentioned, this is kind of small, I can barely see this on there, but um, you know, we're, we're, these are concept, we're concept testing, right? And, and there's a lot of steps after this, um, you know, doing uh, a pro forma or a cost benefit analysis could be those next steps to understand what that means from an infrastructure investment. Um, and, and as we get in front of developers, then you have a better understanding of what it takes um, in negotiation. Um, so as we, as we think about, you know, we thought about what developers want, you know, obviously they're out to make money, but you guys have gotten ahead of them. And to me, the biggest thing on this is regulatory predictability. Because if you can provide them with a vision, a framework, and say, we want these components as part of that, you've already started. You're already ahead of them. And so to make that um, make that jump and for, before they come to you and you're reacting, you've already got a good jump. So to me, that's a really important part of this is, is but that's the point of going through this exercise, I believe. Um, so we had four conceptual plans. Really, as I said, there's, there's, there are variations on a theme. They have all the components I've talked about in different ways. Um, we had the workshop here a couple months ago. Uh, people around the big boards and printed really big, people talking, pointing, weighing in on what they liked, didn't like. Um, we had a, um, a survey out there as well that people that didn't come uh, could weigh in. Uh, I think by and large the people that came got a, a, a better, you know, they got this presentation. So they had a better understanding of, of what the process was and what the thinking was. So I, I feel like we got really good response. Um, and we, you know, I, I can go through what the preference was ultimately, if that even matters. But I'll, I'll walk through these plans, um, and, and I'll try to be quick. I don't, don't want to take all of your time, but um, I'll start with framework A. Uh, we called. We have just names for these, so we can keep them keep them uh, 
together but civic anchor front door is what we call this one so with each of these you're going to see a framework a with a phase one so when we started to think about we started with frankfurt we had you know the thirty acres we had you know those metrics so we wanted to think about how that town center the red is that town center color um, I wanted to think about that as our guidepost and then the civic components which are in the civic and open space, um, the green open space and then there's a lighter green, it's recreation. The yellow is that idea of town center single family. Um, and so how do we organize these things in a way? So each one of these will show the, um, you know, the phase one, a full build out, the site's 480 acres. It's, it's gonna take a long time to build out, right? Um, and 159th has a lot different character than 151st. So one of the things we got to be cognizant of is making sure that's probably going to be a commercial frontage. This is what the predominant land use has been. That's going to be a different type of, of uh, commercial than what is in your town center, the walkable, smaller, mom and pop, local stuff, right? So just things to think about. Um, and as we show a framework of um, roadway systems like we need the north south east west connections in some way we show a few different ways that that can happen um, and we show kind of, and then we get into kind of more detailed plans of what that phase one can look like in a little bit of a, a 3d so with this concept the idea that that town center is in the corner adjacent just right across from here so right by the the civic anchor um, that you could connect right into your roadway system around Heritage Park, that north-south street. You could have recreation at the frontage on 151st Street adjacent to that, a civic open space um, to the south, and then you could have either townhomes or that single family um, town center uh, development adjacent to it. So those, that's what we're showing in this <coughs> phase one. The phase, the full build out, and we start to talk about much more housing, um, the commercial, all that pink along 159th, um, and, and thinking about how that could build out, again, a 20-year vision. There's flexibility in this, I think, over time, you know, you'll revisit, but the first part I want to talk about is that um, the phase one and the plan this shows a little bit more, where we're showing buildings and parking relationships, so the mixed-use retail or the town center commercial along 151st, very visible access point that comes in into parking where you can park and walk and there's co civic component to it, those little green spaces between the buildings, um, some townhomes adjacent to that, oh, not more open space, you can see all the trails and then the single family kind of along that, um, along that area with the recreation fields. There's wetlands, we know, There's, we need stormwater, we can make those features as we do this, and each one of these you'll see that feature as that natural component that we can build off of and really play up as part of the um, town center or the overall development um, so that you can have trails and pathways and landscape as a part of it, okay? And as we look at this in 3D, kind of hovering above, um, you know, this is looking back uh, south, um, over 151st is in the foreground there. Um, you can see the you know, scale of that and what that means. The, um, the buildings in the foreground, those mixed use buildings, the town center commercial, the townhomes adjacent to that, walkable tree lined streets, pathway connections, the recreation component that would tie directly to this, and then the single family homes beyond that. And I want to say, like, this, the single family homes could be. There could be ranches. There could be other styles of homes because we know we need stuff for seniors. So the variation there um, is is really uh, is something that you could think about. And and I think you want to make it interesting. You want to make it um, a place for everybody. That's the first concept. As we look at framework B, we thought about um, we call this in the loop. So kind of a loop road that comes off of 151st still need the north-south connection. Again, we got a mile from 159th to 151st. Do we need to build a roadway in the first phase? Probably not. Probably, you could probably create this really compact area. And that's part of that next step is figuring out what infrastructure do we need to build as part of phase one. So thinking about that a little bit. Um, this concept, as you can see, pulls that phase one town center 
a little further from 151st, a little south of this loop, loop road with this great um, civic open space that has a pond component, naturalized pond and trails around it. Um, and then, you know, around that town center would be the, the town center single family homes and um, off to the west, that recreation space. Um, and thinking about how we can how we can get that component in there uh, as part of a phase one, potentially. And then as we move forward, um, additional single family, and we dash in roadways, obviously it's conceptual, um, but a similar thought with how we can transition land uses away from the town center. Um, and if we look at this in, uh, in as, as buildings, and, and the idea that we're really creating uh, uh, this really cool space in the middle, surrounded by the mixed-use town center buildings, all the retail, the coffee shops, the restaurants, um, boutique shops on both sides of uh, this kind of U-shaped uh, green space that maybe has a <coughs> civic component to it, that little blue building, across from this great park, uh, and surrounded by um, walkable streets, uh, tree-lined streets and, um, and, and housing on both sides. <coughs> the recreation on both sides. We show soccer fields, could be baseball fields, softball fields. We, we show the idea that it could be active recreation with, um, you know, trails around it. Again, ponds and, and uh, things like that are really important for uh, stormwater and detention, which is a reality. And if you look at this one in, in um, 3D, Kind of hovering above, you can see the size of that um, green space and um, the rec space, and uh, how that horse, uh, horseshoe-shaped green uh, in the middle of that civic, civic uh, town center would orient toward the Great Lawn. Uh, framework C. Um, this one is called the Main Street Boulevard. So thinking about a boulevard street that comes in with maybe um, some, you know, traffic calming like roundabout. Um, uh, type uh, roads and on, on the town center would uh, extend south from 151st Street uh, as, as an organizing component across from that recreation space on the west. Um, the civic open space would be on the, on the east there uh, with the pond feature. We show townhomes and we show single family just south of that. And as we look at the full build-out plan, how that would, how that uh, boulevard might be lined with townhomes and single-family in the um, northeast quadrant of the of the property. The phase one, so giving that, you know, really we've created a main street lined with buildings, not with parking. The parking would be behind. Um, and in this one, we show the idea of an indoor recreation facility. That blue box there on 151st be right across the street here. Could be indoor hockey, could be indoor soccer, other training, things that, it, that you could use for all seasons. Um, and then there's a component of recreation adjacent to that. So this just gives you a feel that could be a part of any concept. It was just an idea that people brought up. We wanted to test and put it on, on one of the concepts so you can see what the scale of that is and how that might relate to the town center itself. And as you look at it in 3D, um, how it's kind of more linear, north-south, um, the big green space component in between residential housing, um, the townhomes on the south end there, and then that kind of purple building would be the indoor rec facility and the rec by the recreation fields across from, um, across from Village Hall. And the last uh, concept framework, um, great, we call this Great Park Town Center, so just creating, kind of mirroring Heritage Park on the other side with this great long, um, pond naturalized feature with paths and all of those things and the, the red town center would orient that way um, and with this you know great you know great street system and boulevard street system uh, just to the south of that um, and as we go to the plan you can see the town center buildings kind of framing um, and orienting toward that great park space which may have some recreation component. It's not as heavy on the recreation fields, active recreation fields. It's more naturalized, but it does have some component of that as part of it. Um, so you can see how that the, the single family homes are on either side of that, some townhomes on the south. 
um, of that boulevard street system. And a little view of the 3D, um, as you can kind of see how the, uh, the scale of those things and relationships work together. I'll stop here. I know that's a lot. It was a year-long process. As I said, it was by and large positive. Um, these are visions. To me, they lay out the components that you want. They've thought about infrastructure. They've um, been adjusted for all those components that I think would make a really great town center. We know it's a long-term vision, um, but we appreciate, I appreciate the, the chance to present that tonight, and I appreciate the community's um, passion and um, engagement along the way. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. Does any of the trustees have any comments? Um, I have a couple comments, Mayor. Um, Kevin, first of all, I'd like to thank you so much for all your hard work and effort that you have put into this. Um, it, it's been a long process, and, and I think that you really did get our vision. Um, everything that the steering committee threw at you, you came back to us and you said, well, maybe that's, maybe you're not really thinking that, but maybe you're thinking this. So you, you got exactly what we were talking about, to keep the rural charm of the, in the charm of the village. Um, and moving forward with something like this, you know, it's, it's within our control. Um, Kevin gave us, they gave us the vision, and it's up to us to be able to incorporate in that vision anything that we want to see for our community. If we want senior housing there, if we want small shops, if we just want a gathering space, it's really within our control. And as he even stated earlier, you know, if a developer comes in and a developer comes to us with this concept, that's their concept and then we have no say in it. But this gave us the tools and the vision moving forward so that when and if we want to move forward with this, we're, we, we know we've already done the hard work, we've done the legwork, we've done the visioning, and we've actually, incur you know, we've gotten so much input from the community, and not everybody was 100% on board, and you're, you're never gonna get 100%. But the people that did give us input that was positive, they, they were the ones that chose the location across the street. We didn't choose that. We were willing to look at six or eight different locations, and when we put this back out into the residents, the residents said, no, we want this location across the street. So that actually really saved us a lot of time in having to evaluate all those other, uh, spa all the other uh, areas. So moving forward, just try to keep a positive outlook on this. It, it, it know that when and if this comes to fruition, that it's gonna be with this community's input and what this community wants to see. And it's what our community's vision is for this. We know we need single family homes. We know we need senior housing. I myself, I have friends in this village that their kids can't live in this village because there's nothing for them or no housing here. So, I mean, we have to look at the big picture, not only what is just good for some, but what's gonna be good for all. So thank you again, Kevin. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Trustee Cons Oops. Trust Whoa. Councilino, do you have anything? Yeah, I have a lot of questions that um, should be taken into consideration, you know, for the next phase with everything. Mm -hmm. uh, and these come directly from residents. Um, but first and foremost, I want to, I'll, I'll start with some of them. Um, just so on the record that that way they can be addressed. Because, you know, Kevin, you guys were very honest in all your literature that you provided for us. You didn't give all the information, you know, with your presentation, it would be too long, I understand that. Um, also, your company was very honest during the planning commission meeting. Um, I also want to say thank you because there were a lot more negative comments that, you know, kind of are going to go in the direction of some of the things I'm going to address. Mm -hmm. And you did put them on there. You guys were very honest and I, I greatly appreciate that because that honesty shows transparency and that's what our residents need to put them at ease. But, um, you know, questions that people are asking, you know, and my heart was in this in the beginning, you know, and, and, I'm, and for the same location. But it's kind of seemed to take on this bigger life. And so these are major concerns that I have and other residents. Um, you know, has anybody spoken with Marion Village yet, you know, about the preferred site location? Um, I just want to be clear 
that if we go with any of the four frameworks that you guys designed, they all allow for high density housing. So, you know, will we, if we do this, we're going to have to change our comprehensive plan to reflect that, and we're going to have to allow for rezoning. So in all honesty, rezoning will permit high density housing, which means it could allow for townhomes, condos, and apartments. So people need to know that. Um, you know, the Lakota group stated at the planning commission meeting um, that a developer would not touch this unless we looked at many, many rooftops and rentals. And Janie referred to that this evening as well. Um, you know, in the literature provided tonight, it says row homes and multifamily housing are less expensive per unit to build than single family homes because these formats consume less land and provide construction efficiencies. The greater the allowance, for these type of dwelling units in the framework concepts, concepts and the development RFP, the easier it will be to elicit a quality development proposal. I have people asking me if we've spoken to developers yet, what their plans are, if, they've, if we spoke to anybody, what do they want. Um, boy, um, you say Frankfurt, and everybody here really loves downtown Frankfurt, but as a resident pointed out at the planning commission meeting, that was designed organically. It just this is not what we're looking at. Mm -hmm. um, you know, also, there is no high density in downtown Frankfurt. And so it's, there's a little bit of, you know, like you said, on the outskirts more so, but not really in the downtown. So it's kind of apples and oranges what we're going to be looking at for Homer Glen. Um, I also want to point out for the record, you know, and, and a lot of us do remember this because three of us on this board were elected for this purpose. There was a survey in January of 2021, so it's just three years ago, where a village resident set up a public survey asking the community if they wanted high density housing um, in our comprehensive plan. Over 2,000 of our residents participated in that survey. 90% responded no. And the reason that the resident conducted the survey was because the village's survey by Ken Con Savoy, sorry, didn't give the option for anyone to say no to high density. And a lot of residents called me about this and said that here we are again in 2023 and 2024 where all the plans that were put in the survey didn't give the option to say no. And then you got some of the responses in the survey saying that. So I'm, I'm really kind of disappointed in that part and I did inform trustee reinders of that and I asked if that could be fixed and it wasn't. Um, this is something I sincerely think, you know, if we're looking ahead that this is something we should probably have on a referendum item for November. Get a direction of where people want to go. And this was also said by residents at the comprehensive planning meeting. So I, I don't think that I'm, regard, like, I'm not saying anything that's just my opinion. I'm speaking on behalf of a great many deal, people that pay taxes here. So I would really sincerely like this to be taken into consideration. And I really would like it to be considered to go to referendum in November. So I, I think it could wait. It's waited this long. So that's my piece. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Trustee Mason? Um, yes. I want to uh, reflect on uh, both uh, Trustee Reinders and Consolino. I think they're both correct. Um, I think you've done a great job, Kevin. You did a great presentation. Um, I read through the packet very well. I went, attended a few meetings. I was at Homer Fest. <coughs> I hear two different things going on. When I come to the meetings, I hear negativity. When I'm out in the field, I hear positivity. So I'm a little confused. You had alluded earlier that you were going to um, tell us what the mass is, what, their, what was their uh, preference on this. Yeah, I mean, the, the, as far as the concepts go, the people that came to the meeting in person, which got this, there was a lot more positivity when we got to engage with people. And um, I think people did note concept D, that framework, was the preferred concept. Um, oddly, when we did the survey online, um, it was not. And, uh, it, there was just a different response. Um, what was I think that response? If you the response was, it was one of the, it was like the least preferred. Okay. <laughs> and I don't know exactly why. I can't pinpoint that, to be honest. It was, is that right, Melissa? I think it was, it was pretty low. Um, and, and I think they didn't have the benefit. We did have a video on there. We tried to give a video presenting this and giving an overview um, like we did in person, but it didn't resonate as much. And I, 
So. Probably because just like I read through the packet and I saw it all and I liked uh, certain things and then you brought a few other things to light which uh, I'm appreciative of. Again, I think you did a great job on the presentation, and I agree with uh, Trustee Consolino that maybe it should go to referendum. Let's see what the masses want. That's it. Trustee Steinman. Thank you. Um, thank you for all the work, because I believe that we need to have a vision and keep reevaluating our vision. So when we incorporated, um, everybody was low density. And I think we're still hearing low density. So the um, multifamily townhomes are, are shocking. They were shocking to me to see them in the plans. But um, I have this, I, I sincerely question the rooftop concept. And I, we've heard that for 20 years or 22 years, whatever. And yet we still get businesses here. Uh, we have very little space available for any business to come in, move into for retail space. And strip malls are not going to attract the kind of type of businesses that we, the residents would like to see with the charming restaurants or boutiques or whatever. You have to have a, a town center or something like that to attract. Um, as Trustee Consolino pointed out, Frankfurt didn't have, uh, had low density in their t downtown center. And I came from a suburb that, uh, Lombard, and when I was growing up, we had a downtown center. It didn't have apartments. Now it's loaded with apartments, you know, and, and I think that's because what, what comes first, like the chicken or the egg? The, the train station came, the businesses came because the train was there, then the people moved there because they wanted the conveniences of the train or the businesses that were down there. And so then, then that brought in the apartments. I don't think you need to do the density before you get the businesses. And I, I, I just think that there has to be another approach. We have to be more creative than that. This community has demonstrated over and over again that we can be cr creative. Um, also that, um, I just wanted to show you this. Uh, this was our green vision. I think you were shown this initially when you started. And this was done in 2004. And we had a lot of community input for that. And um, this was where they showed the town center back in 2004. It was at 151st Street. And some of that design looks a little bit like what you did with the water features and um, the shopping. But the point being is uh, our cons our residents have consistently said low density. They come to all of our meetings and they say community and nature and harmony. And over the years, I've watched different trustees say, well, the environment people are a little bit wacko and uh, you know, they need to tone down. But you know what? We're still consistently saying that same message. And the same thing, um, so like our lighting, people complain about their lighting ordinance, and then I, in the last couple weeks, I can't tell you how many times somebody has said that they were proud that we're a dark sky community. So I, I think we, we have to stay true to that. That vision was there 20 years ago, and it's still here today. So, um, but I like these plans because I do want to tell the developers out there, look at this town center. We want something like this. Um, I don't want to see Parker. Um, uh, multifamily housing and townhomes along Parker Road. That just, I think that if the areas, we want to keep the rural character, you want open spaces and low density on the perimeters and maybe you do allow some of that row housing close to the down center. But um, one of the things that we have done in this community is when you look at Kingston Hills and Stonebridge Woods, um, and maybe even at Evelyn's Gate, you have, some, you have some dense housing, but it is surrounded by the larger housing. And so, and, and custom. So, um, but thank you for this. And I, I, I don't think it needs to go to referendum because I think referendums are often very confusing and I'm not sure what that is going to accomplish because we're not taking any action to purchase property or spend taxpayer money on it. And so when somebody comes to the board with an idea, I think the board can listen to the residents. They, come, they definitely come out and speak when they don't like something. Sometimes you have to show people um, something that they don't want, and then you get to hear what they really want. And I think that's what some of this brought up. Thank you.
Thank you, Trustee Stanley. Trustee Fiogo? <clears throat> yes, thank you, Mayor. First, I'd like to say environmentalists have their opinion, mm -hmm. and I, I respect their opinion. Every, everybody, you know, in, in this, on this board and in the audience and our community has their opinions, and anybody involved in environment is entitled to their opinion also. So I don't want to take anybody from the environment and, uh, and their, their opinion any less than anybody else's. And to start though, Kevin, you've done a great job. Your firm, the Lakota Group, has a very good reputation. Uh, you have a big project going in Tinley Park. You're, you guys are very well known for uh, a, a lot of projects that you do in a lot of different places, and you have been very successful at doing that. Um, my, I, I've heard a lot of input from everybody, and I know at the meetings it's a little bit better, but the input that I've been getting lately, people, I think there's more confusion out there than anything, and I don't, I don't know how you fix that. You're used to doing that, but some of the confusion that's out there probably needs to be addressed. Um, but with that said, um, for our downtown center, I, in the early phases of it, I thought we were going to look at possibly putting medical facilities on, where you're talking about putting units or, or, or housing or, or what that what turns into high density. Uh, I, I'll never support high density. I just want you to know that from the beginning. Um, so however that can be worked out. I do agree with Trustee Mason and Trustee Casalino that going to a referendum on something like this in the long haul once we're a little bit closer with your your study and what you've collected uh, from the community I think it would be a better way is to go to a referendum uh, and to get the opinion the, the, the you know a referendum once you're at close to the end and, and to see what the community does want with that uh, because their, their input obviously is just as, as important as this board. Yes, the board can make decisions, but we're here to represent the people. We're not here just to make decisions as a board. So I, I fully support going to a referendum myself. Uh, so thank you. Uh, just like everyone else said, thank you for all the hard work. It's not easy. Um, I want to remind everybody that this, this is exactly what everyone keeps calling it. It's a study. I, I've heard multiple times, you know, go to the village board and tell them to vote no and do this, do that. I don't, just like Trustee Fialco said, I don't know where the confusion com is coming from. It's a lot of misinformation out there that, again, like I stated earlier, that we're just going to put up a bunch of apartments to make this town center survive. I mean, we don't even, we don't, the developer, the person who owns the property that this is even propo being proposed on hasn't even said if he wants to do this or sell the land. I mean, for me personally, I think we're putting the cart before the horse a little bit here because, um, again, it's just a study to see what the residents wanted to do. I have never been for high density. I believe when I first met your group when I was the clerk and they had asked me about it, I, I was 100% against high density. There's a difference between high density, so like Evelyn's Gate North was mentioned earlier, those homes are very close together, so that, that can be considered high density. I remember when that development was being proposed however many years ago, we had maybe 100 to 150 residents in the room fighting that development, and it is the most, it's one of the most sought after communities or um, subdivisions in our community. So there's a lot of misconception of what high density is. When people talk apartments, I'll say it again and again and again, I am absolutely not for apartments, as I stated before when we had met the first time. Um, I don't think it needs to go to referendum in November, only because we're not voting on anything. There's, there's no vote here. There's this, this is just a study that was brought to us on the, all the information that your group had gathered to let us know what our residents want. I do think it's a little, um, I agree that's a little misleading because after reading all the comments from every resident, you know, a majority said no high density, no row homes. And on all, most of these plans, I see row homes and, and apartments. I would have liked to see more of, um, of a you know, town center with like an Evelyn's Gate style, maybe surrounding it. I think that would have been awesome. Um, but we got our study. There's no vote right now. I personally feel that we, heard, we hear you. We got it. We understand. Me personally, I want to put it on a shelf for right now until we accomplish or tackle many other more important things on our plate and then you know, look at it down the road. 
I, I think putting it on a referendum kind of ties our hands one way or the other. I mean, that, that's my personal opinion. But I, I didn't mean in November. Oh, okay. Well, Neither did I. Oh, okay. Road, yes. oh, okay. Further down the road. It was stated for November. Oh, yes. so. If it were to include it, yeah, I think. And further down the road, absolutely, because like I said, this was just three years ago. I mean, everybody on here remembers that survey. So I think that if, if this is going to come back with the same kind of plans, yeah, it should be visited as a referendum. Of course. I mean, anything big like this would have to go to a referendum. However, we have no control over what happens. I mean, that developer can, I mean, that, I keep saying yep. that, that landowner can Could sell it Walmart. and build homes. You know, I mean, he doesn't even have to do this. This is just a study of what people want. Um, it's a good tool for a developer to say, hey, if Gallagher and Henry wanted to come forward and say, you know what, I want to build a town center and we tweak it, great, here's the tool su to success, go for it. But I don't think the village should invest any more money into it. I don't think you know, that the, the village should pursue at all with it until later on down the road, if this is what the residents want again, uh, bring it forward for a referendum clear, detailed referendum. Does anybody else have anything more to say on that? No? Thank you. Thank you Appreciate very much. It. Thank you. Okay, moving on to legislation and action items. Number one, consider a motion to approve resolution 24-004, a resolution authorizing the execution and agreement with Lakota Group to undertake a master planning and design process to update the Heritage Park master plan subject to the review of the village attorney. So moved. Trustee second. Consolino, Trustee Reiner, second. Trustee Consolino? No, I think they've done an excellent job. So I'll second. I'm in Trustee Reiner seconded. Oh, she did. Sorry. Trustee, are you done? Yeah. Trustee Reinders? Um, basically, uh, we had, we wanted to move forward the Veterans Memorial, but we know we needed to adjust our master plan for Heritage Park. So what we did is we, uh, Brett Westcott and uh, the Parks uh, Committee put together an RFP to uh, go out to see who we could, uh, who would be interested in actually undertaking that project. So uh, after we reviewed all of the applicants, Lakota Group came back, uh, <laughs> And they seem to get our vision again. And uh, so we decided uh, to recommend to the board that we would like to uh, go with uh, Lakota Group to basically revise the master plan for Heritage Park. Trustee Mason? Um, I'm not opposed whatsoever, but I think no different than uh, other things that we purchase, um, just like uh, M3 with the equipment, John Deere, I see multiple qu quotes, and I know you ran it in front of um, your committee, mm -hmm. and uh, I just don't see anything else attached where I could have seen the others. Oh, there were six quotes. That yeah, right, and I don't see any. Uh, that's the only thing. I don't have anything else attached. Oh. I don't know if anybody else does. It's you had it? All right, so I'm missing it is all. Okay. It's in the packet. It's behind the, uh, there's, there's a, the I didn't mind. resolution is very thick, right? That one's really thick. This is a separate sheet of paper. Listen. and. It has a summary of the six uh, submittals that we got from the six different firms, and it ranks them, and it also shows all the prices uh, from all the six different firms on there. As well. Oh, okay. I must have skipped past it. I apologize. Thank you. Thank you. I, like I said, I was not opposed. I was just looking for the rest of the information. Thank you. Trustee Fialco? Oh, I, I really didn't have any. I think they've done a good job Trustee Stylin? Uh, yes, I, just uh, the quotes I think were loose in the packet, and that's why I, I discovered them later. Um, yeah, I think it's the fact that the Coda Group has just already surveyed our residents, it's a nice um, extension to continue with that feedback um, to do this, this park planning, and um, I would like to encourage the residents to continue to be involved because even though on the last one we did five, 500 people, I, I, I like to have input from more than 500 people. <laughs> so, but yes, I support this. Thank you. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. So I stand corrected. Um, I do see, I do see, um, and I did go through this, but I did not see in my packet the other quotes. 
I'm looking for it again. You said it's which page, Brett? Because I, I went through this. I did see this, and I only saw the one from Lakota. I don't see any other uh, quotes in there. A little late for me to study it, though. <laughs> which one? Oh, that was part of this? Yes. Why wasn't it attached? That's, that's what happened. All right, all right. My fault. Sorry, our Blame trustee riders. I'm sorry. Blame it on the copy machine. <laughs> or the stapler. Are you good now, Kurt? I'm okay now. Okay, trustee Field, going. I some. have uh, just one more question in the resolution itself on page two. Um, the top sentence uh, where it says the village board of trustees authorize the village president or the village manager to execute the agreement with Lakota Group. Um, at, at this point, uh, there's nothing, well, we haven't made a complete decision, it doesn't seem like, right? But yet we're allowing, why wouldn't it come back to the corporate authorities? I, I, I just, if somebody can answer that question, I'm asking you to ask whoever. I don't know where, I'm I, trying to look where uh, you're It's on page two of yeah. the resolution itself, 24-004, uh, page two at the top. Um, okay. I'm just wondering why we why we would put section two in there uh, without just bringing it, it. I mean, it should come back to the corporate authorities, and we all agree uh, in the end here. It does. It says the village board authorizes the village. Oh. Well, you see where it says authorizes own the village president or the village manager to execute the agreement with the Lakota Group, not the corporate authorities. You would authorize us to yeah. sign yeah. off. That's what we're doing now. <clears throat> Yeah, that's, that's what you're passing. So you would authorize us to sign the agreement. I'm going to have the village attorney clarify that. Yes, first. because it's a little confusing for me. Mm -hmm. um, so the resolution that was prepared has a copy of the RFP included here, in addition to the proposal agreement that Lakota put together for the village to execute. And the person that executes that agreement is either the village mayor or the village president or the village, man, uh, village manager who's ever available to sign the agreement. So what this resolution does is it authorizes, this board is authorizing either the village president or the village manager to sign the proposal agreement. It's exhibit two in that actual packet. Um, the only things right now, uh, Trustee Fialco, there is I had sent some revisions as to some insurance terms, some indemnification clauses, things of that nature, which have nothing to do with the scope of work and have nothing to do with the actual price. So rather than holding up the vote, so to speak, I drafted the resolution to note that, you know, other than terms in regard to pricing, in terms in regards to scope of work, we, my office, will be reviewing it to finalize it with Lakota Group on those non-price related or non-scope of work related terms, and then the village president or manager will execute the agreement. Okay, thank you for yes, coming. Thank, thank you. Was there any additional comments? I forgot where I was on that. Everybody good? Taking a roll. Uh, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Trustee Stylin. Aye. Trustee Mason? Aye. Trustee Fialco? Aye. Trustee Consolino? Aye. Trustee Reinders? Aye. Motion carries. Number two, consider a motion to approve payment of the Village of Homer Glen's February legal bills from Peterson, Johnson, and Murray in the amounts of $10,926.50. Is there a motion? So moved. Trustee second. Consolino, is there a second? Trustee Mason? Trustee Consolino? No. Trustee Mason? No, ma'am. Trustee Fialco? Uh, hold on one second, please. I believe I just had a question about one thing. Would you like me to come back to you? Ah, uh, yes, please. Trustee Stylin? No comment. Trustee Reinders? No comment. The only thing I have is uh, if we could just ask Joe Baber if he's reviewed the billing and see if... He I did. Have. <laughs> I do every month. I go every through. Every month. All right. Um, the only reason I, why I was taking a closer look, it looks like we're answering some other people, and I didn't get into, into the depth of it, but it looks like we're answering some other people other than people at the village. That's what I was looking at at first. But I, I, I'm, I'm good. If that's the case, can you point it to me? I'd like to know, because I didn't see that, but I would like to know. Hold on one second. Are you referring to the sections like when um, reviewing things from sent by opposing counsel? Is that what you're looking at? Oh, that was one of them, but that, that could be. Uh, 
Like this Will Tetreault. County, ASA Mary uh, Tetro. Uh, that would be on that, uh, what we count? one, two, the third page. That was um, for 26, 2024. That was uh, the 143rd matter. Okay. That's what I didn't think it was a big deal. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Trustee Reinders? Aye. Trustee Consolino? Aye. Trustee Fialco? Aye. Trustee Mason? Aye. Trustee Stylin? Aye. Motion carries. Number three, consider for approval the purchase of a John Deere 1200A bunker and field rake for the Parks Department in the amount of $19,709.08. Is there a motion? I'll make that motion. Trustee I'll Mason, second. Trustee Cancellino, Trustee Mason? Um, no, I think that the uh, Parks is doing a great job, and obviously this is equipment we need. We need it for Stonebridge and uh, our own uh, volleyball courts here on uh, Heritage Park, so uh, I'm in favor. Trustee Cancellino? No, I know that it's needed and that, yes, we have three quotes. It's the more reasonable one. It's not rocket science. Trustee Vialgo? Um, where is the turf track in 19? Oh, we're going with the one with 19,000. Um, and that's the John Deere. Uh, did we, did, uh, the only, I always ask this question when it comes to this. I see this is out of Elgin, right? Uh, do, were we not able to work with our local business, Shorewood, to, to get the same, you know, bid? <clears throat> Joe? I'm sure, I'm sure we looked into that, and it probably wasn't available through, through them. I know we've, we've touched base with them before. Um, I don't know exactly what businesses we reached out to and why this particular one was chosen, but they were the best price. Right. There, there is a process, though, and we've gone through this with other things that we've ordered. And uh, being that it's a John Deere product and we have a John Deere dealer in Homer Glen, I, I'd almost like us to take in, in, and see if we're not missing out here by giving the opportunity to our local business who pays taxes to the village. I will make a point in the future of checking with well, Sherwood for any equipment purchases. Just so you know, we did make that point previously uh, when something else came out about. But I, I do know talking to the parks uh, coordinator, she, she usually does. I don't know for this one specifically because I don't see it in here. Right. The, the only but, quote that was given back to the village was this quote for the 19. The rest were given to the township, if you look at it closely. No, I, I understand. Look at it closely. The other bids are given to the township, not the village. And it's the lowest one. Well, that's, that's not my concern. My concern. I get what you're saying. I, I would like to do it on this one, though. I don't want to do it in the future. We've had in the future conversations before, and this has come mm -hmm. up. So I, I would like to table this and make sure that we get, uh, give the first opportunity to the business in Homer Glen to either work with this, these people, because they're a bi uh, Shortwood's a bigger John Deere dealer, and they transfer equipment all the time. And I would rather see that. Yes, continue. I, I'm, I'd like to table it to make sure we're not bypassing Shorewood and, and to bring it back if we can. I'd like to give Shorewood the opportunity if they can. We don't really have an answer. And in the future, I mean, we've had the in, in the future conversation before that we would use Shorewood when we could. And I don't see that we did it on this one. So I, I would like to make the motion to table this until we get clarification that Shorewood it was impossible to use or help out Shorewood, our own local business. Is Shorewood the one on Parker? On, no, it's on 159th Street. In Parker, yes. In Parker. Yes. And this isn't the first time this has come up. No, I understand. I'll second his motion. OK. Is there any more discussion on tabling? Trustee Stylin? Yeah, I was just going to say I made the same note, Trustee um, Fialco that I, I was surprised, maybe did it go, I think the question to find out is, was this a published bid, and, or did we just call and get quotes? See, that's, that's my concern. So because... if it was a published bid and they didn't respond to a bid, then I, I think we, we, have, we should go with what's, what people submitted, and that's Shorewood's fault for not doing it. But if we just called and requested quotes, I think we should right. um, this contact them. Uh, Trustee, uh, Joe. Joe. Village Manager Joe Faber. Do you know if this was a quote process? I believe it was, 
but I'm a little nervous. I would because, have to check the specifics. So. Yeah, because now if we have if we have the information that wasn't, so what I'm saying is John Deere now might have the information and it wouldn't be fair to the rest right. of them knowing what. Do you see what I'm saying? Like the cat's out of the bag now. They could come forward and be like, oh, the lowest bid was 19,000. We'll come in at 18, which is good for us, but it's bad for everybody else. I don't want to make fair. any assumptions at yeah. this point how this process occurred. Um, I know it was in last year's budget, um, so it may have been an ongoing. I would have to get more specific. OK, we'll just, as uh, Trustee Fialco made a first, Trustee Consolino seconded it. I'm fine with that. Um, Madam Clerk, can you call the roll for the tabling? Trustee Stylin? Aye. Trustee Fialco? Aye. Trustee Consolino? Aye. Trustee Mason? No. Trustee Reinders? No. Motion carries. Joe, can you make sure that this gets on the next agenda then, it please? It will be on the next agenda. Thank you. You didn't ask me if I wanted to discuss this, but I wanted to say oh, something. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's what happens when everyone jumps in and starts talking back and forth. And I'm, I'm not saying everyone, I'm pointing to people, but that's, I lose track as it's, you know, but go okay, ahead. Okay, I did have a conversation with Jennifer Vittori today about this piece of equipment. And she said that she did get three quotes. Now, whether she put that out to bid, but Why she, didn't you smack me when well, I was... Well, now we can, uh, based on information well, that we've learned... Yes. But well, no, it still doesn't answer the short. Right. It still doesn't yeah. answer if she went to short, right. but she did tell me today, okay. because when well, we did evaluate the parks, we were talking about how we needed this piece of equipment, and she said, she said, yeah, it just makes it a little bit more difficult now, she said, because now we have to get three bids. All right, well, we already, we already voted to table it. Let's just bring it back. It's in no rush. It. Let's do that. We'll just yeah. bring it back. And, and we still are going to get the clarification, yes. though. Yep. Right. Correct. Yep. yep. Okay. Number four. Consider for approval one of two quotes for the 2024 Parkway Tree Installation Program. Is there a motion? So moved. Trustee I'll Consolino, second, Trustee Fialco, Trustee Consolino. Okay, so on this one, just so you all know I'm not lying, my notes are on here. I did write down, saw it because that's the word on there, but was it put out publicly for bid? This is for the trees. Mm -hmm. So was it put out for bid? Definitely. Well, it's under 30,000. Well, but I mean, we're saying this about the previous right. legislative items. So I mean, like, and my concerns weren't about that one because I thought it was put out publicly for bid. This one doesn't appear to be in I think, Dan, last year, wasn't this kind of in question before, too? I think we only got one, and they were kind of there really wasn't. high. Can I answer? Sorry. Do you mind? Trustee Fialco? Um, yes. They, they couldn't get enough people that wanted to do the work. Uh, I think that's why we only ended up with a one last year. Um, and the only thing we had were, were some choices. Uh, before we got to this process, there were some choices and some changes that were made. But uh, they had a hard time, yes. Trustee Reinders? Um, I remember that from last year as I well. Yeah. Is that all? I didn't want to skip you this time. That's it. You got any other important information you care to share at the table? I'm just kidding. <laughs> Trustee Stylin. <laughs> Um, I, I do want to emphasize that it is important that that information is included in our supplement sheets, like what the process was, whether it was a quote or a bid. So, but, oh, did, does, do you want to answer that? Well, Trustee or, Mason, I got to answer the trustees okay. first. Please. But I just want to say, I think these prices are, are, are right in line. I've done this for a number of years, so I, I would support it. Trustee Mason? Uh, the prices may be in line, but one of them, uh, um, omitted the uh, labor costs of $9,600. So I would have been in favor had I known it going out, it went out for bid. Brent. Brent. <laughs> Thank you, Madam President. Um, two years ago, this, uh, this went out to bid, actual bid. Um, there were no bidders. Uh, then we tried again in the fall and there were no bidders again. So we proceeded to, uh, Debbie did all the, the work on this. She proceeded to contact individual um, people to do this, individual companies, and she contacted, I don't know, there were maybe three or four, and only two, and, they, and this is the same thing as last year, only two opted to submit to us. Um, these are the two that did. And in terms of the, the, um, the same sorts of trees. The one that only submitted the, the labor, we gave them the species of trees, and these are the prices that we're getting on the species of trees, so it's the same price either one. So the, the only difference would be in the labor. Debbie, Debbie did a, a, a lot of 
due diligence on this. She did uh, her job the way she's supposed to. So. Okay, so I, I just have some questions for the attorney. So according to our own policy, this is considered, first question is, I'm assuming this is considered a professional service, correct? Yes. And all, according to our own policy or code, it says the village board must approve contracts awarded through requests for proposal qualifications or bid waiver. These contracts may be entered into without formal bidding. But this is what we fell into the last time when we had to waive the formal bidding process first and then accept this process. Yes. But now we just gave out information that could affect the bidding process. Correct. Well, I mean, there was no intention to do that. If the village board and the staff is presenting an argument to the board, then the if it's staff's position that it wants to um, waive or it wants to have this board waive any internal purchasing bidding requirement due to a prior relationship or doing requisite skill, what have you, based upon using this company in the past or their expertise, they can ask the board to do that. So would that be a motion that should have been on the agenda prior to? Can we make that motion it with this? I think you can make it with it, Madam yep. Mayor. I, I don't. I don't see an issue with that. So I don't. There, this is just the way it is that we can pick one or the other. There's. You don't have to add in the words. We are formally waiving the bidding process. I think yes, you do. You'd have to okay. amend. You'd have to amend it to first and foremost have a motion to waive formal bidding for this, pursuant to your policy, and then you vote on that, and then if that has been waived, then you vote on the actual bid itself to to award the bid. Okay, I'll make the Trust motion. Trustee Consolino and Trustee Fialco made. You did. I'll second. I'll motion to amend. To reflect. Yes, but waiving the bid. That we're waiving. Mm -hmm. Waiving the formal bidding uh, process. But, but there should be. Go ahead. Sorry, please, please go Attorney. ahead. Attorney. There, there, I would suggest that there be a discussion or some sort of information given to the board why staff believes that it's, it sh they should dispense with a formal bidding requirement here. Brett just gave us that. Well, yeah, he just. Okay, yeah, well, provided that's of record. I mean, I, I know that he was speaking. I don't know mm -hmm. if that's been reported. Based on the information that Brett, Mr. Woods, Director Woods has given us, um, as Trustee Consolino stated, um, we would like to amend the motion to uh, waive the bidding process, and I've seconded that, so I think we can press forward at this point. Is there any more discussion on that? And Gina, please make sure that it's noted as such what Mr. Wood stated. Correct. Thank you. Is there any more discussion on that, Trustee Stylin? And, and I would like it noted that next year that this doesn't happen, that it does go out to bid, and that we contact as many people beforehand to respond, the same people, so. Any more discussion? Okay, well, Madam Clerk. What, with what, I would had nothing to say, but now the, with what was just said, though we, we've, as it was explained, we've tried this. We have had no success. We had zero bids. We had to go out. So I don't know if they'll be able to, I, I won't, I, I just don't know if we'll be, they will be able to accommodate Trustee Stalin's uh, request. Is it, and that's just a word of caution, that's all. Okay. Village Manager Joe. Um, <clears throat> thank you. Um, I would recommend that we revisit our purchasing policy overall and make some changes to the process of bidding and getting quotes and bids and the differences. Um, if I can get that direction from the board, I'd like to do that. Yes. Perfect. Let's do that. Let's have it on a meeting in May to review that ordinance, please. Thank you. All right, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Trustee Stylin? Aye. Trustee Mason? Aye. Trustee Fialco? Aye. Trustee Consolino? Aye. Trustee Reinders? Aye. Motion carries to amend, to waive the formal bidding process. Now, can you please call the roll to accept uh, the original motion to accept, was it Bankston's? Yes. In the amount of $24,630. But now, the, it says down here, is that labor cost of $8,100 included in that 24? Yes. Okay. Right. Okay, because last year it wasn't. Right, yes. Okay. Any more discussion? Madam Clerk, please call the roll on that. 
Trustee Catalino? Aye. Trustee Reinders? Aye. Trustee Fialco? Aye. Trustee Mason? Aye. Trustee Stylin? Aye. Motion carries. Number five, consider for approval an ordinance amending Article V1 of Chapter 83, licensing a regula regulating video gaming within the village of Homer Glen. Is there a motion? I'll make that motion. Trustee Fialco, is there a second? I'll second. Trustee Reinders. Trustee Fialco? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, we've been going through this for some time now. I'm glad we're finally coming to an end. But uh, what I would like to do is I would like to amend uh, 8453, uh, 8354 in blue, uh, that paragraph there, which says it shall be unlawful for any person. Um, I just want to get to the sentence. Um, I'm sorry. It's D. D2. I'm, I'm sorry. So it would be D2. And if an existing video game Wait, promises... Wait, D2 under what? 8354? I think it's page five. Are you saying B or it, D? My, oh yeah, it is, uh, it's numbered in the lower right corner as uh, number five. five. Okay. So it would be two. Under exceptions. It, yes, D, okay. D exceptions. Got it. Correct. So I would like to make the motion to amend um, if an existing video game premises license moves to a new physical location, changes its DBA name or changes the legal name of its business, a video gaming premises license may be issued by the order of the corporate authorities, not just the village president, if the following conditions are satisfied. Uh, changing only village president to corporate authorities, that gives the public a chance to put their comment in and give public comment time. It also gives the board everybody on the board the uh, um, the work the input that should be given with this um, so I need a second I'll second. trustee Cancelino well is there so you, you're seconding to amend it, amending it to say corporate is there any more discussion on amending this this is what we discussed last time this is redundant to come back before the village board to to have somebody go back through the village board, to have something that's already existing is, to me, pointless when they, they check all the boxes. Why have it come back again when it's already there? It, it, you guys just keep, it's like, it doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, we're going against what the state statute says, but again. You just reiterated exactly what I wanted to say. This is what I, we said the last time too. Now we're changing again. We just had our deputy clerk speak to the attorney about changing it to what we discussed last time. Now you want to change it again back to what it was. The discussion just keeps going back and forth. I disagree. I don't get a vote, obviously, but I disagree. May I? Sure. Well, let me, can I, 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 let me go back. Does Trustee Reinders have anything to add on the uh, amendment? No. no. Trustee Stylin, do you have anything to say on the amendment so everyone gets one turn to at least speak? I'm sure. None of this before right now. On this particular the amendment. Uh, amendment. Um, yeah, I, I don't have a problem either way. I, I'm, I'm, I'm content with the village president having that authority, or if it comes before the board, that's okay too. Okay, Trustee Vilco. I, I just think giving the public the opportunity to make, have public comment time on a change like that, or something that's changing hands. If a video gaming facility is changing hands, I really think that a, a lot of the public makes comments about gaming in Homer Glen. It's right? not changing hands. It, 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 uh, it's changing hands. So in, in I, the meantime, I got the floor right. Yep. Yeah. Um, so it's thing, changing the name. Trustee Mason, Fialco has the, Trustee Fialco has the floor. Sorry, Madam Mayor. So, so what I want to do is give the transparency back to the public and to the board. I understand what you're saying. I looked in the statute. I didn't see that it says this in the statute. Matter of fact, before it was up to the village manager to do it with gaming license, and now it's, it's changed. So I, I didn't find it in the state statute. It's never been pointed out to me where it's at. And, and so I think this is good for our whole community. It involves the public. It involves the board, and it, it's just as e easy to do it that way. And I, I think it gives transparency to the whole process. That's why. I guess my argument to that is, why does the public care if it went from Joe Schmo to Jackie Chan? Who, what, do, what difference does it make to them who the owner is? Like, just for example, Davidson's. They changed hands. What difference does it make? It's still the same spot. It's not an adding a license. It's not taking away one, which is what the state statute says the board has the right to do. It, uh, what my point is, 
we're going this we're supposed to be business friendly and now mm -hmm. we're going to have somebody come back in front of the board go through this whole process again i just think it's it's poor business i just if something happens i mean if, if a business okay we have businesses that sell a time just like we have another restaurant in town. If that restaurant wants to sell, they're going to make that person go through the village hall, get on an agenda. It's going to prolong their sale. It's going to take them longer. We have to do another. It's just, it's, to me, I think it's redundancy when we have all the steps. If they meet the 2,000 square feet, if they meet the transfer of sale business, if they meet all the requirements, what's, what's the difference? And before, it was village manager, you're correct village manager when it was manager Morella. Manager Baber doesn't want that, but I think it's because it's me that you are having this uh, second thought and now want the board to have it every minute of every time there's something that comes to the board where it's my responsibility, it keeps getting pecked away to take away. I don't agree that you have to make the businesses go through all this again. And is there anyone else that has anything to add? Jesse Stylin. Just, just a quick question. Um, they, they get licensed by the state. Mm -hmm. So when, this, when these situations happen, does the state do anything different? What do you mean? I mean, they have a gaming license with the state, right? Mm -hmm. So if they, do, if they change their address or doing business as, or whatever the other condition was on here, do they have to do anything different with the state and reapply for a license? Gina, go ahead and answer. So because the video gaming license is attached to the state liquor license, any changes that they make in regards to their liquor license with the state, they, the state does contact us and we have to write a letter stating to the state that we are aware of the changes. Whether it's uh, transfer of sale, somebody's being removed from the license, location, anything like that. So, yep. Trustee Reinders, did you have anything? I gotta go around for yes, everybody at least I once. just want you to know I'm sorry. Yeah, Trustee Reinders? No, I'm good. Trustee Consolino? Trustee Fialco? Yes, just, and I, here, this has nothing to do with you. You said, made a comment, I, that's not true. The thing is, even the state is requiring to know, be notified. That's another step, right? So the step of transparency with the state is taken care of through the state, and then it's just taken care of through here. I don't see it as a burden to the business at all. I think it's all about transparency. It's transparency with the state. They require it. It's transparency with this village. We should require it, and this board should know what's going on. It's just another step, just like the state does, as it was just explained. So I, I, don't, I don't see the harm in doing it. it. Honest to God, it has nothing to do with you. It just has to do with the public having input, the state requiring it, we should require it, and the board should know what's going on. That's basically it. The board always knows what's going on. But Madam Clerk, go ahead and please call the roll for the amendment. Wait, is there any more amendments, or should we do one amendment at a time? Trustee Stylin? Aye. Trustee Mason? No. Trustee Fialco? Aye. Trustee Consolino? Aye. Trustee Reinders? Aye. Motion carries for the amendment. Is there any more amendments? Oh. Trustee Stylin? Well, I, I don't know if I'm going to get support, but I would like to remove the truck stops. Um, I checked the Illinois Gaming Board, and there are 20 villages or cities municipalities on that list that um, have gaming, but, but they prohibit truck stops. So they still have licensed gaming, but they don't have to have the truck stops. And since we just went through this thing with Parker Hadley Road, we don't want trucks coming through our community. And we're fighting the widening of 143rd to also discourage trucks from coming through our community. Why would we do this with video gaming? Thank you. I'll, I'll second so that way I can go to a vote. Is there any more discussion on the amendment? Uh, Trustee Fialco? Yes. With, with that amendment, um, I don't know if we need to ask counsel, but um, it, we're saying that we don't want to allow any more truck stops. I mean, the truck stop at 159th Street and Cream Road, there's a lot of restrictions. 50,000 gallons of gas, so many square feet. Uh, there's a lot of restrictions. Now, what we're voting on is to stop all truck stops, I mean, if you get gas there and you're a truck, is that a truck stop? I mean, there's the definition of truck stop in here. But what I want to make sure is that, and I, would, I almost think I would support what you're doing, but the thing is I want to make sure that the truck stops that we have already established that bring in a lot of month tax dollars 
for this village that they're not stripped of that in the process. Can we be guaranteed that by the motion to amend? Yep. And may I ask you, Madam Mayor? Trustee Fialco, are you asking about just licensed truck stops in general, just the general category of a license, or as it relates only to- You're saying grandfather, but not- Well, the motion is to remove truck stops from this ordinance. We already have truck stops that have it. So I kind of support that idea without having the truck traffic in anymore, but we do have a Menards project that's waiting on this that is dependent upon this, a lot of what they're doing. But the word truck stop, I mean truck stop over by Myers. I mean, I don't know what we're voting on when it comes to truck stop, because we don't have a definite, I haven't heard a definition of what you want to call a truck stop besides what's there. And if that's the case, I just need to know that we're grandfathering in the ones that are already established, that's all. May I respond? Yes. Trustee Fialco, I understand what your concern is. My recommendation is that we draft something to grandfather which facilities currently have licenses or which facilities currently are seeking permits that the board would want to grandfather in under this provision and exclude them going forward. That's going to take a little bit more time than just being able to craft it right now on the spot. I'd like an opportunity to revise that provision. What I would suggest is that we can certainly pass the code and then we can come back and do an amendment to it to exclude certain things with a grandfather clause specific to the truck stops that are currently in existence. Okay. I don't know who went already when Trustee Ryan was. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter. We are right along 355. You're going to get trucks up and down 355. And if we don't allow people to build truck stops along 355 in the areas that are designated Homer Glen, then we're going to have Lockport building, which they're doing now, building gas stations or truck stops across from everywhere else, close to where we are, and we're going to lose that revenue. So I think, and I think I had said this once before, if we created a district where we would allow truck stops and they would only be allowed in that area. I mean, you have, you have to really take into the consideration the money that Lenny's gas station generates. They're one of the highest generating revenue businesses that we have in Homer Glen. And I think we would really be cutting off our nose despite our face if we say we can't have any truck stops in Homer Glen. Let's designate an area. Let's create a district where they can be. I mean, I don't want a truck stop in, in my residential area, or I don't think anybody else does, but we've got a total commercial area up and down 355. So I don't know. I, 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 I just I'm, think. Just to, can I clarify? Yes. We're talking about prohibiting video gaming in truck stops and not truck stops themselves. There's land use I issue think, and sure there's the video stop. gaming issue, just to clarify. Yes. <laughs> I get that. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. I thought I was, I was misunderstood. I thought she didn't want any truck stops at all. No. no well, I'm, I'm, okay, then I disagree. I still, I still believe that we should, if you look at the revenue that Lenny's is generating, I think it would be foolish yeah. if we, if we did it. Trustee Mason, did you have a chance to speak yet? No way. Somebody okay. took a lot of time. Um, I'm not familiar with a gas station or a truck stop on 159th and Cream Road because I don't believe Cream Road goes through. I've never seen it. Um, also, I, I think what uh, Legal has told us, Mr. Pasquinelli, if we pass it and we come back later, um, I think we can clean up the wording. Um, I think... What Trustee Reinders is trying to say is that you are going to have some um, truck stops along 355, and why open up the door for our uh, opposing um, villages and towns and cities to uh, take the business. But uh, I don't want to hear it when you guys see the legal fees on there because Mr. Pasquinelli has to change it yet again. Did everyone, did you get a chance to speak? No, Trustee I didn't. Consolino? Trustee Consolino, I'm losing okay, track, so it's getting late. <laughs> There, there's two factors on this that, that kind of play against each other. 
I love the tax revenue that it generates because it doesn't burn our residents. Okay, this is a by choice, it's a pass through tax. And yes, Lenny's generates a ton of money for us. Um, so it's a blessing. And, but the, on the other hand, I feel like we're getting inundated and you and I have agreed on this. I, I would like to see if we could maybe limit it. You know, like, so if we had to change the wording, this is the time we're working on it anyway, let's change it to reflect that. Can we limit the amount that we'll give to truck stops, okay? Because here we are again, next to Myers, there's a truck stop going in, and it's gonna have gaming and a car wash. Across the street, yeah. So, you know, I, I hate to point out the obvious, can we start limiting this? So if we can do that, and we're doing this ordinance now, I would rather have him do it properly for us. I think all those in favor of limiting? Okay, then should we just be tabling this mic? And, and... Go ahead. Uh, my, um, Trustee Consolino, my recommendation was that, or one of my recommendations was that the, since everything is buttoned up with the exception of this truck, truck stop issue, mm -hmm. I think Trustee Fialco pointed out that there are businesses, truck stops potentially, that are waiting on the passage of this to conduct their business. Myers. So if this gets passed, it won't, it will not, these other businesses that are permitting and doing all these other things are not going to be infringed. Hold up. Because they would be potentially grandfathered okay. in in the event the board decides they want to remove or limit the amount of truck stop gaming enterprises okay. in the future. Can, then can we pass this as is and revisit? That's what my recommendation was. Thank you. Yeah. It's up to you guys. Well, right now we have a motion on the floor to amend. Mm -hmm. Right. Do you want so me to? You guys so want to amend your amendment or what? I don't know. Or vote on it. Well, I, I guess I'm concerned because when would it be revisited? I get promised things and just remember the call to Sack Road. <laughs> And um, I have no problem revisiting it. And um, I, I see the point, but I, I wasn't in support of the gas station going in on Bell Road with the car wash. I, when that petitioner was here before the board, I, we were just approving that. We were not approving gaming at that time for that business. So I have no sympathy for that because we, not, we did not present that. I, we did not approve it at the time. So um, I understand um, Trustee Reinders, I could see right next to 355. Yeah. But I saw the ads online. You can have a truck stop. You can have gaming at your truck stop and make all this money. And we're going to get them on Bell Road and yeah, I, further down 159th. So I, I, I don't want to remove it. But you guys can outvote me. So you're not withdrawing your? No. OK, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Trustee Reinders. Oh, you had to call me first. <laughs> Aye. Trustee Consolino. Yes. Trustee Fialco. No. Trustee Mason. Yes. Trustee Stylin. For the amendment. Mm -hmm. Aye. Trustee Mason. Do you want to be first or <laughs> Trustee Consolino? Trustee Consolino. No. And Trustee Mason. How does it feel, Trustee Mason? It feels like, it feels like a no right now. <laughs> so the motion, the amendment does not pass. All right. Now, is somebody making a motion to table this? Is that what I heard? No. 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 Okay, so we're voting it on as it is. Yeah. With the one amendment. Is there any more amendments? No, but we can revisit this. <laughs> right. Revisit what? Bring it back. The grandfathering yeah, piece. Yes. Mike explains it. Yeah. Uh, there would be nothing. There would be nothing. May I speak? Yes. There would be nothing to grandfather if the village board were to pass this gaming code as is. There would be no nothing for me to grandfather. If Got it. We bring up a, a later revision to the code, seeking to limit or restrict the amount of licensed gaming truck stops. I can draft a grandfather provision to protect those businesses that relied upon this up to this point. Perfect. Okay, Perfect. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. <coughs> Trustee Consolino. Aye. Trustee Reinders. Aye. 
Trustee Fialco. Aye. Trustee Mason. No. Trustee Stylin. No. Motion carries. Okay. Moving on. I got it, Rose. Uh, consider for approval an ordinance extending the moratorium on new tobacco licenses for 30 days. Is there a motion? I'll make that motion. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Yes. Trustee Fialco. Well, Go ahead. Made the move. Uh, no, I just want to at our la at the last meeting, I believe we uh, to, 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 on the March 13th meeting uh, we got a 30-day extension already, right? So we're looking to extend it another 30 days. This is what I kind of. So May 13th. Can we 13th? get input from staff to? Just um, deputy clerk. So it, it, it took a lot longer than I expected, and we are working with Marissa, and I should be getting that revision from her soon. I'm going to have a conference call with her early next week and with Melissa King, and then we will get that draft to the board. We were waiting until the gaming ordinance passed as well because we want to make sure that everything that's in the tobacco license is on the same page as the, the gaming license. So it's resembles each other so it's the exact same wording everything as far as um coming before the board and and the processing okay can, can may i ask the question though sure. um, you're still on the floor the, the 30 the 30 days are you expecting that to be may 10th business including business days or including weekends or only business days no. and what date are you looking for so it so the original moratorium ends on the 13th right so would that be considered per the ordinance I'm guessing it would it's not ordinance? specified so you could just pick including weekends next two board meetings just throw something out there 30 days from today then if this passes May 13th yes perfect Does that answer your question yes well that, that that's a Monday but that's fine with me just as long as we have a goal so the 13th of May or the 15th. We have a board meeting on the 15th? Nope. That's... Well, I'm hoping this comes back to the board the very next meeting. It should come back. You're saying April 24th? 24th? I would say, well, let's put it to May 8th. That'd give you a little breathing room, right? And closer to that 30 days. Correct. We could do that. Okay. So is there an amendment to the 30 days and just say May 8th? I, I will make that motion to make the amendment to this to make it the 30-day mark uh, our meeting on May 8th. Is there a second for the amendment? I'll second. Is there any more discussion on that? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Now can you call the roll on the original? Trustee Stylin? I mean the amended. Sorry. Trustee Mason? Aye. Trustee Fialco? Aye. Trustee Consolino? Aye. Trustee Reinders? Aye. Motion carries. Old business. Yes, ma'am. Trustee Mason? Yeah, I would um, like to uh, thank uh, EMA coordinator Ron Cuss. Um, I know we just got um, the go ahead today uh, for the automated external defibrillators, and uh, he's done a great job of uh, securing a grant for that. And uh, basically the village pays nothing, but yet we pick up 10 additional defibrillators and uh, he's doing an outstanding job and didn't take any percentage whatsoever of that money. He did, he did a Thank great you, job. Thank you, Ron. Thank you, Ron. Thank you. Any more old business? Yes. Oh, go ahead, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Dan, you go first. Who's next? Trustee Fialgo. Uh, you know what, we talked about it a few meetings back it, it, and I guess this would be old mo business, new business. I, we just haven't, uh, the street lights out, out there. We, I'm noticing and people are telling me we have a lot of street lights out. And we talked about possibly having the police department, you know, give you uh, the locations and be more proactive than reactive, right? And, and, but it doesn't seem like we've gotten there yet. So I was wondering, Joe, if you could possibly take somebody and put them on a, a, a late, on a late night shift for one week and drive through our whole community and write down all the street lights that are out 
So it's not putting it, the burden on the police force or anybody else, but we take one of our, one, one of our people from public works or, or from parks or whoever you want to do it, where they could kind of take a map and just go through the whole place in one week, just working nights for that one week, get all our street lights down on paper that need to be replaced, and I think that resolves the problem. Can we do that? We can do that. All right. Is there anything else, Trustee Fialco? I just want to thank Joe, if it's okay, for uh, being proactive with the garbage in the community. I see the letter that you put out. You put it out to all the businesses, and we're in the process. We identified a problem. You took care of it, and uh, you're well on your way to correcting that issue. I can, see, I can see the results of it already in a lot of different places, so thank you for that, Joe. Um, the only other thing I'd ask about is an update on the booth model situation that we haven't heard about. Um, did, did you send out an email to everybody? I did. I sent yeah. out an email today. Yeah, check your email. I, was that today? Yep. Mm -hmm. This oh, morning. Okay. That's why I didn't yes, see. Was it today? Yep, oh, this morning. I got mine. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Right. That's it for me. Trust Cancelino? Um, so I heard what you said that we're going to talk privately about 143rd Street, but what about uh, where do we stand on Hadley Parker Road? Joe? We just yeah. We, cause, I don't, yeah it's, we're waiting on. Okay, because it hasn't been signed off on, right? Because it's, I keep getting a lot of questions. Yeah, we're getting, we're waiting to get the finalized paperwork from IDOT. But it's like done. We're just waiting for the paperwork to come back to us. We signed off. We did everything we're supposed to do. They're just, they, everybody. Yeah. Yep. Okay. It's done. It's just we got to okay. get it back. Was that it? And then we can't discuss water treatment, right? Nope. Okay. You mean wastewater, right? Yeah. Yeah. Trustee Reiner, do you have anything? No. Is that it? All right. Uh, new business, same as old, really. Okay. Uh, we did the work stop. Is there an, uh, a motion to go into executive session for discussion pertaining to a potential real estate acquisition, discussion pertaining to munis municipal utilities, man, and personnel? Make the motion. And what second? And litigation. First, second. Second. All in favor, aye. aye. Opposed. We're going to have a five minute recess. Thank you. Whew.